When people first start working out, growing bigger biceps is oftentimes one of the main goals. Having well-developed biceps makes you stand out and gives the appearance of an overall fit physique. But many people seem to struggle with bicep development. In this video, I'll give you three science-based tips on how to train your biceps. At the end of this video, I also show you practical ways you can incorporate these tips into your existing training routine. But before we dive into the specific training tips, let's first discuss the functions of your biceps. The bicep is a two-headed muscle. You have the short and long head of the bicep. The short head is closer to your body, whereas the long head is on the outside of your arm. Both heads of the bicep are responsible for elbow flexion and wrist supination. But by training your biceps from different angles, it is possible to emphasize one head of the bicep more than the other. I'll discuss more on this later. Underlying the two heads of the biceps are the brachialis and brachioradialis. These muscles also aid in elbow flexion. Even though the brachialis and brachioradialis are technically not part of your bicep, their development do influence how your biceps look. So we also look into training these muscles in this video. Now that we understand the functions of the bicep, let's dive into the training tips. As you just saw, the biceps are mostly active during elbow flexion, but elbow flexion doesn't occur just with bicep curls. If you perform heavy pull exercises like pull downs, pull ups and rows, your biceps will also have to work hard. This brings me to my first tip, and that is to include heavy pulling exercises into your routine. If I look at my own training, my biceps have grown a great deal from strengthening my weighted pull-ups and bodyweight pull-ups in general. This is because the biceps play a primary role when it comes to pulling a heavy weight. Oftentimes, people are so narrowly focused on doing bicep curls that they forget that progressively overloading their back movements also contributes to bicep development. There is research to support this. In a 2015 study, doing the leg pulldown resulted in a similar amount of bicep muscle growth compared to doing barbell curls over a 10-week training period. Now, this is not to say that bicep curls are useless. More recent research suggests that there is a benefit in doing bicep curls over just doing a heavy pull exercise. So see isolation bicep exercises as the cherry on top that will allow you to optimize bicep development. You need both the compound movements and isolation exercises to get the best and efficient results. The second training tip is about using the right isolation exercises in your bicep training. As you saw earlier, the bicep has two heads, a short and a long head. No matter what bicep curl variation you use, the short and long head work together to accomplish the movement. But it still may be possible to put more focus on one region of your bicep over the other. If we look at the anatomy of the two bicep heads, we see that the long head crosses the shoulder joint. Because of this, the long head of the bicep is placed at a more lengthened position when you perform bicep curls while your arms are behind your body. So based on the length tension relationship of muscle, the long head of your bicep needs to work slightly harder during exercises like incline bicep curls. On the other hand, when you keep your arms in front of your body, the short head of your bicep will need to take on more of the work. This is because the long head of your bicep will be more shortened and won't be in a favorable position to contribute to the movement. So you can change your bicep exercise selection based on which head of your bicep you want to focus on more. But if you have two or more bicep exercises in your training week, then generally it's a good idea to include exercises that emphasize both the long head and the short head of your bicep. To give an example out of my training, I do both dumbbell preacher curls and incline bicep curls. Other examples of exercises that you could use are cable bicep curls where you face away from the cable and dumbbell spider curls. The last tip I want to give you is about developing the brachialis and brachioradialis muscles that I mentioned at the start of this video. The brachialis and brachioradialis flex your elbow. But since the bicep's brachii muscle is more powerful, it tends to take on most of the load during regular bicep curls. Luckily, we can take the biceps out of the movement by maintaining an overhand grip during bicep curls. Since there is no supination, this puts the brachialis and brachioradialis in a more favorable position to take on the load. So to develop the area around your biceps, consider also adding a reverse grip curl to your routine. I suggest to use the easy curl bar if it's available, since with a straight bar you're more likely to excessively stress your wrist. 
You can also use dumbbells for reverse grip curls. This allows for more freedom of movement. So now that I've covered all three tips, let's look into how you can utilize these tips into your training routine. To keep things very simple, I suggest you include four movements into your bicep training. Firstly, include heavy compound back movements into your workout like pull-ups and rows. Then incorporate bicep exercises in which your elbows are in front of you to target the short head. Also incorporate bicep exercises in which your elbows are behind you to target the long head. And lastly, incorporate reverse grip curls to emphasize the brachialis and brachioradialis. In the example of having two upper body days in a week, your training could look something like this. As you can see, we have a reverse grip exercise, exercises for the short and long head, and heavy back movements. The rep ranges for the bicep exercises are moderate and around 10 to 12 repetitions. I am not fond of doing bicep exercises very heavy since I find it makes it easier to break form. Control in your training is key when it comes to growing your biceps. And that's all for this video. I hope this gives you a better idea on how you can organize your training to optimize bicep development. Undoubtedly, somewhere in the future, I will also do a tricep variation of this video. So if you're interested in that, then subscribe to this channel. Also, leave a like if you found this video helpful. And I hope to see you in the next one.